Hello, Oscillate Sync here. The Poly and Play is a groove box with eight tracks of sample playback and eight tracks of MIDI control. Leaving aside the beautiful array of LED pads which adorn the front panel, its main distinguishing feature is its focus on generative, algorithmic and chance-based tools designed to help you quickly create and iterate on musical ideas. Much has been said and demonstrated on the play with regards to quickly creating often intricate beat-centric music, and rightly so, as that is an area where it excels. But many of the concepts and features on offer here apply equally well in the world of ambient music. So that's all we'll be doing today, making use of these features to put together a little generative ambient piece to chill out to, to demonstrate the workflow and the sounds. In the interest of transparency, Polyend kindly sent me the play for free for the purposes of making videos on it, but I haven't otherwise been paid for making a video, and Polyend haven't asked for nor if they've been given any editorial oversight into the video's content. It won't be much of a surprise to any regular viewers, but this video is going to be pretty chill, and I'll be taking my time to build up the piece from scratch, but hopefully there'll be some nice, mellow music to accompany the journey, so hopefully you'll join me. And if you have any questions or observations as we go, be sure to hit me up in the comments section. Let's get So going. I haven't plotted out this piece like properly, but I have got a kind of plan and a kind of vibe that I'm going to go for. And I've loaded up some samples to start us along that kind of journey. So in terms of the samples I've got on here, um, I've got some piano samples. Uh, which I made myself. They're not the factory ones, because the factory ones are quite um, hard sounding. You know, nicely sampled but quite hard. I've got some of these lap harp plucks here which is from the factory settings and then I've got a bunch of stuff that I recorded on my kalimba both in terms of intervals, some kind of percussive stuff in there and then um, just plucks at various different velocities. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of what we're going for. In terms of the layout of the track I was thinking uh, for the first two tracks, we'll do some kind of piano phrases, which uh, are of different lengths, sort of polymetric things, which are going to kind of cross over each other and phase around. And then I'll try and create a sort of generative accompaniment, which moves around the um, uh, the, the key to recontextualize those phrases. I thought we'd then do two or three tracks of more sort of ambient um uh, maybe even some backwards masked stuff it might be fun. And then I wanted to have a little bit of percussion, sort of quite sparse, I think, to begin with, uh, just because it kind of holds uh, an ambient piece together sometimes. And then the other thing I want to be able to do is kind of um, progress the piece uh, by making use of one of the particularly cool features on the play. So because we're going to be making use of generative ideas, um, which is pitch as well as a rhythm, uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is come into the menu and go into the scales menu. I'm going to turn the scale filter on. And what this means is that we can only play notes within the scale that we choose. And any of the randomness uh, that we introduce that affects uh, uh, pitches will also always fall within this scale. So it means that we're able to... Um, use randomness but it still kind of sound right most of the time. Uh, so I'm going to choose a scale type here and I think I'm going to go for the good old, where are we? Uh, yeah, the good old standby of pentatonic minor. Pentatonic scales are really good for this kind of music because it's impossible to play two notes which sound bad next to each other basically. There are no real discordant notes uh, within there. Um, the one downside of using the scale filters is that they are absolute and you can't break out of them even if you want to. Um, currently you can't, literally can't define a note outside that scale. So if you want to create tension when putting stuff outside the scale, you can't do it. But I think for our purposes, uh, that's going to be fine uh, today. So on these first two tracks, I want to have this kind of phasing, phrasing, uh, probably a piano thing that's going on. And I want them to phase over each other rhythmically. So we're going to use that kind of polymetric idea. And it's really easy to set up on the play. So I can select the entire track here. And then in the track length, I'm going to choose my length. And I'm going to go for 23 for that one. And I'm going to go for uh, 29 for that one. So we're choosing prime numbers here, just because that means that things don't repeat very often. Right, so let's find the first sound. I think, as I say, I'm going to go for a piano sound. And I'm going to choose probably a pitch above where I want to go. And then I'm going to tune it back down afterwards. Uh, so I'm going to find a nice rhythm and then define the notes uh, afterwards. So I want to actually define the notes for these phrases. 
So let's start by putting down. Um, so turn, 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 something like that. And then we've got a bit of a weight. Okay, um, so let me um, pan this to one side so we can hear uh, which one is which um, of the two phrases. Cool. So we'll just set up the panning for the other side for this one. So you can hear that these rhythms are never really repeating over each other. They're always phasing in and out with each other. Okay, that's good. So let's um, define their pitch a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the whole lot down an octave. Um, just because then we get that nice sort of tape slowed down kind of feel to it. Half speed is best speed, as Heimbach will always tell us. I'm also going to just put a little bit of overdrive on these. Maybe just drop the bit right. Get some of that little bit of fuzz and air in the background. Okay. So let's choose some notes here. Um, so maybe just mute one of these. Dun, dun. something for this side as well. Mm -hmm. Let's go down up first. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's take this one lower instead. how those two sound together. Okay, yeah, that's that's doing something uh, neat, I think. So at the moment, this sounds kind of robotic, and uh, that's because each of these notes, or they're changing pitch, they're all at the same velocity, and that's kind of... Um, making it sound very sampled and uh, sequenced. So let's um, make use of some of the um, generative features here to move that uh, volume about a little bit. So I'm going to select the two tracks together. I'm going to use the randomize here. The randomization type we're going to use is just volume. So we'll set our randomization amount. And this sets a range sort of, of a deviation from the current amount. Okay, so we'll hit save then, that's going to apply 
that randomization that's just been generated and sort of bake it into the track. There we go. I'm just going to raise the overall volume of this as well, I think. And just drop the filter down a little bit. Maybe apply a little bit of resonance which will allow us to emphasise the top end. Okay. Right, let's think about this um, accompaniment part then. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a single piano note here, and it's uh, maybe... Um, to find a different note here and let's go let's stick with this particular sample we'll just drop it down lower I think okay so now we have this repeated note every 16 steps but I'm going to make that a bit lower I think or a lot lower let's try that It's still panned as well, so let's put that back in the middle, shall we? Now let's bring that sample down an octave or two. So now we have this repeated note there. Now we probably don't want it to be a C every time. So here we can make use of the chance uh, to choose a random note each time, or choose a random note sometimes, actually. So um, the action I'm going to choose here is going to be a random note, but because we've defined the um, the scale, it's always going to be in uh, the right key. Okay, I just need to actually apply that to that step, sorry. This is me uh, thinking like it's a dig attack when it's not the dig attack. <laughs> so now it's going to choose a different note each time. I'm just going to recontextualize those phrases. Okay. But um, just choosing a random note every single step kind of robs it of structure a little bit. So what I'm going to do, rather than having it change the note every time, I'm going to define a chance based on um, repeats. Um, so the setup I'm going to use is, uh, let's try uh, play to skip to, so you have two random notes and then two where it goes back to the, the C each time. So we've got a random. C, sort of rooting it back in the key, so C again, and then we should have two random notes, which then kind of give us that shifting accompaniment. Okay, that's getting somewhere. All right, let's think about what we want to do next. I think what we want to do next is slap some reverb on these parts, especially on these two. So um, we'll select the whole of those two tracks and we'll just come up to the reverb send here. And I'm just going to turn up the reverb amount. Probably not quite as much on this one. So this is using one of the built-in um, reverb presets, uh, but we can actually set our reverb how we'd like now. So let's do that. Uh, so we can come into uh, settings here, oh no, sorry, into master effects rather. And rather than in 
uh, in here where we've got different presets, we can choose custom and then we can define it. I think I was playing around with something earlier, because that sounds nice. Yeah, so... So I might use this. <laughs> I was playing around with this uh, uh, earlier. Uh, what I've done here is I've um, got the damping fairly low, I've got the size quite big, and I've turned the diffusion down, so it's not smearing the reverb so much. We're hearing a bit more of the individual echoes inside the reverb, which I always really like. Adds more texture. And already this is kind of perfectly pleasant to listen to, I think. Right. Let's take a, a moment to breathe and think about where we're going to take this next. I think what I want to do next is bring in some percussive elements, just something sparse, but just to ground uh, the piece as it is. Uh, so I'm going to use these bottom two uh, tracks to keep out the way of my melody area here. So let's choose a sample, we'll come into the folder, I want my taps and knocks, uh, which is just me tapping and knocking on uh, my kalimba. Uh, cool. And um, we'll make use of the fill functionality to populate this stuff. So um, let's choose a uh, length for these two tracks. Um, we can go quite short because I'm going to um, make use of some Euclidean, spoiler alert, uh, techniques. So let's go something like 12 on that one. And uh, 11 on that one. Let's try that. Yeah, so we've got 12 and 11 there. Cool. So um, we've chosen uh, just one of the samples for the moment, and I will select this first track, which has 12 steps. I'm going to come into fill here, and the type I'm going to choose is Euclidean, uh, and I'm going to choose a length. Generally speaking, I go odd numbers on an even numbered track, it just seems to work nicely. Uh, so I'm going to do three. No, wait, that divides nicely. Let's go five. Uh, five into the 12 there. And hit fill, and that's going to populate those tracks. So now... Yeah, okay. And then on this next track here, which has uh, 11, uh, we'll do a similar sort of thing, so, oops, <laughs> already on the film menu there, Euclidean there, and um, we'll go uh, 4 into the 11 perhaps. Okay, okay that's all a bit much at the moment, so let's uh, pan these things so we can hear what's going on. Obviously, sort of sonically, this isn't um, super pleasant at the moment. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things to it. The first, I'm just going to filter down a bit, take some of that top end out. And then I'm also going to uh, shorten it a bit. Also do that randomization on the volume just so it has a bit more sort of movement in the sort of back to front side of things. Yep. And then let's 
let's uh, bring in some uh, chance here. And in terms of the chance that we're going to bring in, I think. Let's go with a random sample. But probably not always, so we still have that kind of knocking sort of around half the time. Okay, let's bring the filter down a bit more. some overdrive. Probably volume down a bit more. Get a bit of reverb. Just a tiny touch. A bit of delay maybe. for that delay as well. Uh, so, delay type, custom. take a moment to uh, enjoy how aesthetically pleasing it is to watch all the tracks move across. Okay, um, right, I want to get a bit more sort of uh, ambient kind of weird stuff going on here. So let's just mute a couple of these tracks just so we can hear what we're doing a bit better. Okay, um, I'm going to choose uh, some of these intervals on the kalimba. Let's try a fourth. Okay. Um, so I was wondering, like, doing some backwards masked stuff here. So, to reverse the sample on the polyam play, it's slightly, um, it's slightly awkward, uh, frankly, it'd be nice just to have a, a reverse feature, uh, but what you do is you set the start to the end and the end to the start, basically. So we'll uh, do that right now, uh, except we need to actually apply it to that step, let's try that again. into it. OK. 
got some reverb. <laughs> yes, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, uh, let's see what happens if we um, go for a random note on that. Okay, that's cool. Right, um, I think what we'll do is slow this track down so it's not happening quite so often. Hey, uh, okay, let's turn off the random note here. Let's turn off the random note here and let's slow this track right the way down. Uh, tempo, track speed. I'll just make sure it resynchronizes. Okay, so we've got a much slower track now, and I'm going to just put one of these down every other. I'm going to set the track length actually on this track to 14, perhaps. There we go. So that's happening just you know, every time there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use randomize here and use it to randomize uh, the pitch uh, within one octave. There's a bit more space. Okay, let's break that in. And then we'll use chance instead to lower the chance of one of these playing. Before we do that, actually, let's pan them as well. So we'll pan them individually. Okay. Let's get in somewhere. Give them some space. Okay, so chance. Set it down to like try thirty. Let's bring some of this stuff back in. Okay, follow me, this is too high, so we'll turn that down a bit. Cool, yeah. some other kalimba stuff in here um so this track let's set its length to uh 14 no yes 14 sure and let's see if we can just get this to generate an entirely random useful thing let's see if we can do that so uh, we'll use fill to put down random notes Uh, we 
always sucks as I'll sample that. of tunes let's just <laughs> tune it okay let's maybe slow that down by half just to have it skip notes occasionally. Uh, given that worked quite well, let's uh, let's try the same trick again, but maybe uh, go up. So uh, for this track, we'll set the length, um, so we'll do 14 on that one. Uh, so let's do uh, 19 on this one, and we'll use the random fill again, I think. Let's fill those notes. Like that, yeah, cool. So 
so let's apply that randomization. I think again we'll slow this track down by half. So these two are quite dry at the moment, so let's give them some reverb send. Some delay. And again on this one, let's lower the chance that a step actually plays. think about how we can um, evolve this from a performance standpoint. One of the most sort of underrated features I think on the play is the variation feature. So um, we're kind of used to the idea with groove boxes that we have multiple different patterns and by changing patterns you're changing to a, a, a different pattern right so that's a different pattern to the one I was just playing and here's the pattern I was just playing and, and we can switch between them during a performance and you're moving to entirely different uh, patterns uh, or almost entirely different songs or different sections of a song right um, that's how most groove boxes tend to organize stuff and you've got that on the play what you also have on the play is this idea of variations and variations work on a per track basis so although we've got all of these different patterns, within a single pattern, each track then has 16 different variations that we can switch between. So on this one track here, I can switch to a different variation. It's currently empty because we haven't built any variations yet, but it allows us to evolve just this one track here while leaving the rest of the piece alone. So if you want to create pieces which evolve, over time you can bring in different ideas without completely rebuilding the pattern every single time this is an incredibly powerful feature as i say i think it's really really underrated and um i didn't really get it when i first looked at the play uh, but now that i've played with it um i kind of wish my other groove boxes could do this as well so um let's look at how we can maybe evolve this track using the variations so i think maybe a good place to um start Playing with this is in these rhythmic tracks here, because that's obviously a, a really obvious way to start to evolve the, the sort of the push of the track. So let's just mute off some of these friends here. Okay, good. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll select this um, top of the two here and I'll copy it. We'll go into its first variation here. I can paste the same thing in here. Select this track first sorry there we go so now we have two variations which contain the same um, note information but we can start to make use of uh, other ideas in here to evolve this particular track so um, so I think one of the first things we could do is um, add an additional note event course Uh, let's make sure this is in the right uh, sample, of course. Uh, and I thought maybe we could bring in some of the repeats as well. So these are like ratchets. triplets aren't really working are they? Uh, let's try three over. So 
So we've now made this track a bit more busy by introducing some additional notes and making use of some of the repeats. So if we go back to our initial variation here, things a bit more sparse, first variation. busy. Let's do the same thing for this uh, other um, rhythmic track here, so we'll copy that, move to its first variation, paste that in, a similar sort of workflow that's Give it some repeats. Cool, yeah. And then let's maybe have um, a final variation which is just like one hit, so it's much, much sparser. So let's come into the third variation for each of them. Stick a single So now we've got a much, much sparser variation that we can move into there as well. Let's maybe think about variations for our um, melodies as well. So uh, I'll copy this first one again and move across to its first variation. And I thought what we could do for this one is just introduce a little bit more randomness into this one. So uh, just to remind myself what we're doing for chance. We're not doing anything for chance, which is great because that allows us to easily introduce some uh, randomness here. So maybe for um, 
for a few of these notes, maybe these last three notes here, we can select all of them, we can introduce some random note chants in here. So action, random note. version here which evolves naturally. So that's cool. Uh, so let's do the same for this one, same idea, I think that works really nicely as a way to evolve things. So we'll copy that one, move across to its next variation. Uh, track has to complete before it moves across to a variation. Um, which is why it takes a little second there. Paste that in, lovely. Uh, and again, we won't do all of the notes random because it's nice to sort of ground it in something that repeats. But we'll select those ones. And again, we will... Uh, random note. And then maybe on this uh, accompaniment part, another night event in boom ding 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 maybe like that so we'll just copy this one again across to the next variation and paste it in So let's move back to our piano. off a little bit there but we can deal with that a little bit okay well, these two to be lower generally speaking
So now we have a couple of different variations that we can bring in to evolve our track beyond just music stuff. Massage this a little bit to deal with that click a little bit though. And of course we could do similar things for these tracks here as well. But I think we've got something nice here. And we could go on and avoid and uh, evolve this further. But I think we'll leave it here for today. Because this is already a very long video. So, um... Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this little ambient journey with the play. If you enjoyed the video, then as always, a like and subscribe is massively appreciated. But other than that, till next time. Take care.